Hello 3D printing friends, it's time once again for another Mod Mondays video on the BV3D channel. Today we're going to be installing Marlin firmware version 1.1.9 on our ANET A8 3D printer. And we're going to do it from a Mac, but Windows users don't worry, I'll point out the few places where the procedure differs so everybody will be able to follow along. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Now, before we get going, I wanted to say thanks to all of you who subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love it if you would please click the subscribe button down there and also click the little bell to get notified when I release new stuff. Okay, if you are watching this video, it's because you have a want, a desire, a need to install firmware on your printer. In particular, you want to install Marlin, and since we're doing this on an A8, it is entirely likely that you are embarking on this journey so the printer will have thermal runaway protection enabled. For those who may not be aware, thermal runaway protection is a firmware feature which cuts power to the printer's heating elements when it doesn't get the temperature readings it expects. Here's an example. The printer's hot end contains a heater cartridge, which, as you may expect, heats up when power is applied, and it also contains a thermistor, essentially an electronic thermometer. When you start a print, the G-code file tells the printer's firmware to set the nozzle to 200 degrees C. Without thermal runaway protection, if the thermistor fails and the firmware never sees a temperature change, it keeps applying power to the heater cartridge, blindly trying to reach that 200 degree set point. The heater cartridge can get hot enough to start a fire. With thermal runaway protection, the firmware tries for a few moments, but if the temperature doesn't start moving in the right direction fast enough, it assumes something's wrong. So it cuts power to the heater cartridge and the bed, and it halts the print. Now we know what thermal runaway protection is, so let's review the hardware and software necessary to complete the Marlin firmware installation. We need an ANET A8 with a bootloader installed, a USB cable to connect the printer to the computer, the Arduino IDE installed, and we'll cover that quickly in just a moment, we need the Skynet 3D ANET board definition file, which we'll cover as well, and we need the Marlin firmware files. And now that we know what we need, let's go over to the computer and get started. First, let's connect the A8 to the computer using a USB cable, and then turn the printer on. Then we can start getting the software pieces into place. If you don't already have the Arduino IDE installed, we will review that procedure now. It's super quick and easy. Open a web browser and go to www.arduino.cc. Once there, point to Software, then click Downloads. That'll take you to the download page. Scroll down just a bit, and in the Download the Arduino IDE section, click the link for Mac OS X. You can choose to contribute a bit to promote Arduino software development, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to click just Download. Once the software is downloaded, check your Downloads folder. If your web browser automatically unzipped the download, you'll see the Arduino icon. If not, locate and double-click the Arduino zip file to unzip it. Let's move the Arduino software into the Applications folder. In the Finder, click the Go menu, then click Applications. This will open the Applications folder. Then, down in the dock, click the Downloads folder to view its contents. Drag the Arduino icon from there into the Applications folder. If you're prompted for administrator credentials, provide them. Now you have the Arduino IDE installed. Next, we need to launch the IDE, so double-click its icon. The first time you launch it, Mac OS may tell you that it's an application you downloaded from the internet and ask your permission to run it. If so, confirm that you do, in fact, want to open the Arduino IDE. As it launches, it'll create an Arduino folder inside your Documents folder. Once the Arduino IDE is fully loaded, we'll quit it. We only launched it so that it would create that folder. Now open your Documents folder, and then locate the Arduino folder and open it. It won't have much in it, but that's okay. We're going to put something inside it in just a moment. That something is the board definition file, so that the Arduino IDE knows how to communicate with the ANET board. Open a web browser and go to github.com slash skynet3d slash anet dash board. Once you're there, click the clone or download button, then click download zip. When this has finished downloading, open your downloads folder. If your web browser automatically unzipped the download, you'll see the ANET board master folder. If not, look for the ANET board master zip file and unzip it. 
Open the ANET board master folder. Drag the hardware folder from there into the Arduino folder that lives inside your documents folder. If your Arduino folder already has a hardware folder, macOS will ask if you want to replace the existing one or merge them. Tell it that you want to merge. Next, we need to download the Marlin project files, and this is the same for both Mac and Windows users. So let's go to marlinfw.org, then click the download button. On the download page, click the link to download the latest release. That should land in your downloads folder. If your browser automatically unzipped the archive, great. If not, you'll need to unzip it yourself. Move the unzipped marlin 1.1.x folder into the Arduino folder, which is inside the Documents folder. Windows users, same thing, put this inside the Arduino folder, which is inside the Documents folder. Now there's one last thing we need to do before we can get into the Arduino IDE, and that is to move the ANET A8 configuration files into place. See, Marlin firmware comes with a ton of configuration files for common printers, and that includes the ANET A8. So we're going to take the A8's configuration files and move them into place so we can make use of them. Let's open the Documents folder, then open the Arduino folder. Inside, open the marlin-1.1.x folder, and inside there, open the Marlin folder. Now, scroll down to the Example Configurations folder. Open that, then open the ANET folder, and open the A8 folder. There should be two files inside, configuration underscore adv dot h and configuration dot h. Select and copy those two files. Then find your way back into the Marlin folder and paste those two files in, replacing the files that are already there. Okay, now everything is in place so we can open the Marlin project. Locate and double-click the marlin.ino file. That'll open the entire Marlin project in the Arduino IDE. Now that we're in the Arduino IDE, let's set a couple of things up. First, click the Tools menu, go to Board, and down at the bottom, select the ANET v1.0 item. Then click Tools, go to Port, and make sure that the port that your printer is connected to is selected. There. Now the Arduino IDE knows where the printer is connected and how to communicate with it. Let's verify that we have the correct configuration files loaded. Click the configuration.h tab and scroll down just a bit. We're looking for the string config h author line and we need to make sure it says Bob Kuhn and anet config. And while we're in this file, let's have a little fun. Scroll down a little bit more to the define custom machine name line. This is where you can set the name that's displayed on the LCD. Uncomment the line by removing the two slashes from the beginning of it. And I'm going to change this from 3D printer to BB3D A8. Now keep it short, there's not a lot of room on the LCD screen. If you set it to John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt's 3D printer, it just won't fit. Sorry, John. Okay, save the changes to that file. And everything looks good. So we've got the ANET A8 config files in the right place. You ready? Let's do this. Click the sketch menu, then click upload. The IDE will compile the firmware and send it to the printer. And this can take a couple of minutes. There we go, now it's done. And once it's done, the printer will reboot and you'll see the Marlin boot screen. And that's it! Now you've got Marlin installed on your ANET A8. You can quit the Arduino IDE and close any windows that you opened during the course of the project. We've just made the printer a little safer because now it has thermal runaway protection enabled. Okay, so that was actually pretty easy, all things considered. We set up the Arduino IDE so that it could communicate with the printer. We downloaded the Marlin firmware and set it up for the A8, and really all we did was move a couple of files, and we uploaded Marlin to the printer. It didn't matter whether you used a Mac or a Windows PC, you were able to follow along, and now you've got Marlin 119 on your ANET A8. And that brings us to the end of our video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please leave your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content that I'm producing, please consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for both are in the description. Well, alright, now that I've got Marlin installed on my printer, I'm going to go print, well, if not something cool, at least a Calicat or a Calibration Cube. 
You go pick something cool to print, and I'll see you next time.